Donald Trump took over the news cycle for a handful of days last week when he disputed Vice President Kamala Harris's racial identity to a room full of black journalists in Chicago. She was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black, and now she wants to be known as black. So I don't know, is she Indian or is she black? She Kamala Harris is, of course, both Indian and black. But Donald Trump knew that. The man whose ascension to the White House was powered by racist lies about the first black president knows how to sow racial division. And make no mistake, that's exactly what he was doing, deliberately, when he falsely questioned Kamala Harris's blackness. Donald Trump knows very well the unwritten rules of black mixed-race identity embedded in American society, legacies of slavery. As Nicole Hannah-Jones points out in the New York Times Magazine, people like Donald Trump often pretend to forget those rules when mixed-race black Americans ascend to political power in America. Quote, by suggesting that there was something nefarious or politically contrived about a mixed-race person claiming blackness as her identity, Trump was acting as if that choice hadn't been made for Harris when she was born to a black father. She goes on to explain how the rules of race, which still govern society today, date back to slavery. When European colonists were deciding who could be enslaved and who could be free, they began drafting systems of racial classification. Children of European men and black enslaved women were black and inherently enslavable. Their whiteness wasn't recognized. Nicole Hannah-Jones says the belief that blackness transcends all other identities is the American way. Quote, Trump and some of the, in the Republican Party are engaging in an age-old American tradition that dictates that only white power gets to define race and racial categorization, and that those who wield that power can create rules or abandon them so long as the rules benefit whiteness, end quote. Joining me now is the aforementioned Nicole Hannah-Jones, Pulitzer Prize-winning reporter for The New York Times Magazine, creator of the 1619 Project, founder of the Center for Journalism and Democracy at Howard University, and inspiration for the Velshi Band Book Club. Nicole, nice to see you again. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Good to see you again as well. I want to start with the NABJ conference from last week. You were there in the room when Donald Trump suggested Kamala Harris turned black for her own political gain. What was your immediate reaction to that? Well, one, I wasn't shocked, right? We know that this is what Donald Trump does. He um, speaks dishonestly. He pretends not to know things that we all know that he knows. And he likes to insult black journalists. So I wasn't really surprised by it. But of course, um, we, we had to push back on that. Everyone in that room who was a black journalist knows that that's nonsense. We know that Kamala Harris has written about uh, her black identity, that Kamala Harris uh, attended a historically black college, that she pledged the oldest black sorority in the nation. So what he was trying to do, of course, was just so seeds of division and um, put portray Kamala Harris as, as a liar. So I guess I'm going to ask you a question that can be asked about absolutely everything Donald Trump says about anything. What's the danger of this rhetoric uh, from Trump in a presidential election? Because a lot of people sit here and say it's 2024. People can't possibly take that nonsense that he said on that stage seriously. Except some do. Well, the danger, of course, is we know that this is going to be a very tight race and that this race is going to be won around the margin. So it's just another way of trying to um, make people be skeptical. You know, if you say a person is lying about something as fundamental as her identity, then that's a way to cause people to question many other things that she might say. Uh, I don't actually know who this message was for. I don't know if this message was for Black folks who obviously know the truth of, of how racial identity works, or if it was for uh, white people who were undecided, or if it was just for his base. It's unclear. But the problem is that the more disinformation that is thrown out there, the harder it begins for all of us uh, to make you know, educated choices about who we're going to vote for. And so this is just part of, as you know, a long pattern of, of disinformation as a campaign strategy that Donald Trump has engaged in. And I think the more disinformation that is out there by the head of the ticket, that that's just dangerous for democracy in general. I want to read a quote from your piece in The New York Times magazine about how race operates in society. You write, quote, when I was a child, my dad uh, sat my older sister and me down in our living room and explained to us the rules of race in America. A black man born into a Mississippi where black boys could be lynched for merely standing too close to a white woman. He met my white mom in 1972. 
That was just a few years after the Supreme Court in Loving versus Virginia finally struck down 300 years worth of laws prohibiting people who descended from slavery from marrying people whose ancestors had enslaved them. In other words, dad held no illusions about how race worked in our society and felt it was his duty as a parent to prepare us. Our mother might be white, he told us, but in this country, that fact was irrelevant to how we would be seen and treated. She might be white, but we were black, end quote. How does that, that preparation, that conversation affect your outlook on America? Well, what it helped us understand from a really young age is something that many Americans say, but I don't think truly comprehend, which is race is a construct. Whiteness is a construct. It was a, an idea made up by Europeans as they were determining in the earliest days of America who was going to have access to our political system, uh, our, our social system, our economic resources. So what Donald Trump was doing when he said, well, Kamala turned black, is pretending he doesn't understand that blackness was also a made up thing, that most black Americans, because of the legacy of slavery, have both European and African ancestry. So ancestry is real. We all come from a place, and that place often determines our physical characteristics. But race was a construct to divvy up power. And my father understood that my having, you know, a mom whose ancestry came, uh, dated to Europe and a father whose ancestry dated to Africa and Europe, that what mattered in this nation, because of this one drop rule that white people created or people who were racialized as white created, meant that the only thing that was relevant was the African ancestry, that blackness would overcome everything else. And if I wanted, you know, if he wanted to raise children who would be able to navigate the society, there could be no confusion about that. Now, Donald Trump is trying to sow confusion, but there is no confusion about that. No one looks at me and says, that's a white woman. But people do look at me and say, that is a black woman. And that has nothing to do with what my parents were. It has to do with seeing any bit of black ancestry. Yeah. We have all been taught that that makes you black. Yeah, that socialization doesn't even have anything to do with what you identify with. It's got to do with what others identify uh, you as, and, and that is sadly not correct, but it's it's the society in which we live. Nicole, great to see you as always. Thank you. Nicole Hannah-Jones is a Pulitzer Prize winning reporter for The New York Times Magazine, creator of the 1619 Project, founder of the Center for Journalism at, and Democracy at Howard University.